Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite <laughs> ultimate Game Boy, Gardner, the Linux gamer. Yeah, that's absolutely true. <laughs> This video would not be possible if it weren't for the 145 amazing people over on Patreon who support this show on a monthly basis. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do this show without you guys, so thank you so much. I want to give a special shout out to Richard Purdy, who is one of the top tier Singularity members on Patreon. That nets him a shout out at the beginning of each video. Thank you, Richard. I really appreciate it. All right, my boys, my doggies, my dudes. So we're talking about an article that I was sent by one of my friends, and I can't remember who sent this to me. If it was you... I'm sorry, I have a very bad memory. So here's the thing, techrights.org caught my attention with this article. Linux is not free software and it's getting harder to fix. I read that and I said, what is this? What is this? Come on, come on, come on with this nonsense. What are you even talking about? But I read the article, it's rather short and there are some uh, ancillary uh, articles that go along with it. And you know what? I think this guy might have a point. Now, this was written by uh, Dr. Roy uh, Shestowitz. I've actually read a couple of uh, articles from Tech Rights, and uh, sometimes I agree, sometimes I don't. But you know what? He, this is a compelling argument here from Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Shestowitz. I, I, I hope I'm saying that right. Summary. All right. The battle for digital freedom has long been lost in kernel space. Earlier this year, TechRights analyzed the complete source code of Linux to find DRM already well entrenched inside the kernel, and it keeps spreading further. That is some terrifying news. Now, I had been reading about uh, HDCPI, HD, HDCP support, HDCPI, I don't know what the hell, HDCP support. So this is DRM, all right, high bandwidth digital content protection uh, it's a it's a it's an it's an encryption scheme for HDMI and DVI and DisplayPort and all these other uh, digital uh, connections. And this is literally just a way for you know movie studios to uh, to to protect their content. All right. Now here's the issue: Linux has been supporting HDC HDCP for a few years. Okay. Now it was originally invented by Intel and it was pushed into the Linux kernel with help from Google and Intel uh, so that Chromebooks could play Netflix on TVs over HDMI. That's, that's, that's awful. That's really truly awful. And you know, truthfully, if you had asked me what is the most innocuous form of, of uh, DRM, and you had asked me this like a year ago, I probably would have said HDCP. And, and my thinking was back then, unless you're using some kind of weirdo device that's not going to support HDCP, then uh, you're not going to run into any issues. But that's not true, okay? Just the other year, just a, a couple months ago, I was on vacation. I was in a hotel room. I had my Nintendo Switch and I had my laptop with me. Uh, I was playing uh, Nintendo Switch on the TV in docked mode just fine. No problems whatsoever. And then uh, my girlfriend at the time decided that we should watch some Hulu. So I turn on Hulu on, on, uh, on the Nintendo Switch, right? And it starts playing on the TV and, and the, the, the image keeps blinking out and the audio is like super garbled and screwed up. And... We were both like, what the hell is happening? And I had this thought, this is a very old television. I wonder if it doesn't properly support HDCP on the Switch. So I unplugged the Switch, I put it into like, you know, tablet mode or whatever, and we could watch it just fine. There was no issue with the audio whatsoever. Plugged it back in, went in, made sure that all the settings were correct, you know, made sure that we weren't using like some kind of uh, 5.1 surround sound or something weird. The problem was HDCP. I logged into her Hulu account on my laptop, plugged into the TV, and it worked just fine. And, and the fact is, the Nintendo Switch, with HDCP support, uh, with Hulu, was defective by design, to co-opt their, their uh, phrase there. It was defective. It was intentionally broken. That is just not acceptable, in my opinion. Um, you know, you get what you pay for with that stuff. But I guess the moral of the story is that if Linux had had HDCP support and I tried to plug in my Linux powered laptop into my TV and it also refused to work, where would we be at that point, right? You know, I have an Intel graphics card in that laptop. What would have happened if I had had an Intel graphics card and, you know, encrypted media extensions in Firefox worked together with the Intel graphics driver that's part of the Linux kernel and just decided not to let us watch uh, Parks and Rec. 
Now, you know, we wouldn't be able to watch Parks and Rec. That's stupid. That's beyond dumb. The fact that uh, DRM exists, it sucks, right? Everybody is opposed. Anyone who knows anything about computers is opposed to DRM. Most people who have had any encounters with DRM whatsoever believe that DRM is stupid and, and it shouldn't exist. It's beyond, it's beyond stupid. It's capricious. And it really does not belong in the Linux kernel. Now, some people are going to say it's not that black and white, dude. Linux should be supporting uh, industry standards like HDCP uh, in order for devices to work, yada, 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 the way people expect, right? What's more important? That apps that people, that normal people use just work on Linux for the most part, right? Or that the kernel is free from DRM, meaning that Netflix and Hulu, et cetera, might not work out of the box. That's a, that's a trick question because Hulu just works on Linux right now the way it is. And if HDCP gets added to, uh, you know, your freaking Linux kernel, well, then guess what? It's not going to just work anymore. They're going to add this extra technical hurdle that most normal people wouldn't know how to understand or even understand why it's not working. It only harms people to have DRM, okay? It only stops honest people and it's only harmful to normal people. It does not stop uh, content theft. It does not stop piracy. And it's fundamentally opposed to the ideals of free software, in my opinion. So here's a question. I, I, this is a question that I have uh, asked on Twitter and in my Discord, and I couldn't get an answer. Uh, nobody seemed to know. Is it possible for non-OEM machines to actually support HDCP? Okay, that's the question here. Because like, I have an AMD uh, Vega 64 in my computer. So let's say that I get the latest kernel upgrade. And uh, the question is, does the, uh, does the graphics card have the capacity to negotiate HDCP uh, content? Or is that, is that part of the driver? Is that part of the graphics card itself? Is that part of uh, the, the media that's being uh, delivered? That's the question, and I don't know the answer to that. Um, if it is only for OEM equipment, like you know, you buy a Chromebook and it comes with the HTCP keys pre-installed, that's one thing. And it, if it doesn't affect desktop Linux users, that I can understand where that might be acceptable for some kernel developers. I personally still think that it's wrong. Another issue that stands out to me is HDCP is a more or less standard protocol now. It's a proprietary one, but it's still a standard protocol. Should the kernel be supporting protocols like HDCP? There are other ways that the uh, that the Linux kernel facilitates uh, encryption. Uh, HDCP is, is just another way, if, if I'm taking some people on their word. But I think the major question here is, which of the four freedoms of free software is HDCP actually impinging upon, right? Let's let's go through them really fast. Freedom zero is the freedom to run the program as you wish for any purpose. Freedom one is the freedom to study how the program works and change it so it does your computing as you wish. Ac and access to the source code is a precondition for this. Uh, freedom two, the freedom to redistribute copies so you can help others. And freedom three, the freedom to distribute copies of your modified version to others. The, 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 the thing that really sticks out to me here is that HDCP DRM impinges on freedom zero, your, your freedom to run your program as you wish, right? Uh, you know, if you want to actually play Hulu on your TV through your Linux based web browser and your, you have HDCP that, you know, either your TV or your graphics card or something isn't supported, well then that program is just not going to work for you. And that really does violate your right, your freedom to run the programs you want as you wish. So the question is, what can actually be done about this? And if you check out the description, there's going to be a link to uh, TechRights, um, techrights.org. I have found that this it has been a compelling thing that I've been thinking about for a few days. And uh, to be honest, I, I think that I fall in their camp on this. I think that the DRM has absolutely no place in the Linux kernel. Now, I have talked to a few people. Uh, some people I agree with, some people I disagree with. It's always interesting to get other people's perspective on things. And 
And the most common response that I received from people, including from uh, the co-host of the Off Topical podcast, Raven67854, he said the kernel is modular and that because of that, uh, it doesn't really matter if it's the kernel that's supporting this or if it's the or if it's a device driver that's supporting this. These are drivers that come from the vendors, right? The vendors are putting this stuff into the kernel and perhaps they don't believe in free software the way most of us do. Um, but why should that matter? Is the software license under the GPL or a compatible license? If the answer is no, then it shouldn't be in the kernel in my opinion. If the answer is yes, then I think this is really a black and white issue. DRM doesn't belong in the kernel, period. If your distro wants to ship a, a, you know, a, a, an open source but DRM supporting a kernel module, we'll go for it. I mean, more power to them. That's why we have different distributions. But I don't think that these should be included in the main kernel tree. I, I really don't. This is, it, this is bad stuff. And maybe I'm taking a hard line stance. You know, maybe I am. Uh, but Linux is free software, as far as I'm concerned. And at f and free software has to respect your rights as an end user, not the rights of content providers or copyright holders or hardware manufacturers. It is supposed to support your rights. DRM schemes are violations of your rights, and they do not belong in the free software world. If Linux doesn't stand for free software and what is moral and what is correct, then what does Linux stand for? Now, I wanted to respond to something that someone asked me a couple weeks ago on Twitter. His name is Christopher Scott. He, he works for Microsoft, and he tweeted out to a bunch of Linuxy personalities, and he said, what will it take for you to begin to trust Microsoft? I think that uh, my answer to this question not only strikes at the heart of the, what we have been talking about in this uh, thing, but it also goes to any uh, extremely wealthy company that has stake in the Linux Foundation or, or the Linux Foundation itself, for that matter. What will it take for me to trust any of you? And the answer to that is fight for what is right and for what is virtuous. It's that simple. I mean, DRM in free software is profoundly and unequivocally wrong. It does not belong there. And it, it doesn't, it is antithetical to the free and open source movement. So my answer is fight it. Fight DRM. Fight it in every commit, in every reply, to a mailing list, to every vote, to every dollar. If Microsoft or Google or Intel or AMD, they, if they want to gain my trust or the trust of the, of the open source movement, they have to do what is right, what is moral, what is ethical. They have to fight DRM. And it's not just DRM. I mean, there are other things that are a threat to the free software movement. Binary blobs and obfuscated code, uh, among other things. And Microsoft has the clout to push hardware vendors to, to release the source code, to unobfuscate their code. Microsoft has the clout. And so does Google. But they don't. They don't fight these things. Instead, they fight to make it easier to get this proprietary trash included in Linux. And that's why I don't trust them. They're fighting for their own interest and how they can exploit Linux for now rather than preserve it and expand it and empower it. And so that's why I don't trust them. In the free software world, what is paramount is the freedom of the end user. The user's rights to, to use the code, to modify it, to do whatever they want, to redistribute it and share it with their friends and help their neighbors. That's what's most important. So when a huge company comes in with all their money and all their weight and, and they come in here with their corporateiness and they try to muddy things up and, and lock things down and, and DRMify everything, well, there's no wonder why I don't trust them. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I that's that's my take on this. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, you can send me an email, gardener at heavyelement.io. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter at the Linux Gamer. Um, yeah, if you if you read the article, I'd love to hear your guys' take on this. Um, there's a lot of like extra content to go along with that, and all of it will be linked in the description. Um, thank you guys for watching. I, I, I found that this was uh, something that was really on my mind and really kind of like gnawing at me for the last week or so as I read through this article. And uh, I would love to hear from you guys. But I think that's going to do it for now. So if you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon. Uh, you can also support the show on LibrePay. There is a, it's a free and open source alternative. Uh, but no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me the Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching.